An upart or out-of-place artifact comes in many shapes and sizes, some clearly being or containing an anomalous object, which no matter how desperately some attempt to discredit, the evidence is clear for all to see. This category of upart, unsurprisingly, often falls victim to theft. However, the other category actually litters the display cases of museums all over the world. These artifacts are being more easily explained away, and as such, they are often attached to a less impressive historical tale than that which was actually experienced. Stonehenge is probably the most iconic ancient site within Western Europe, an ancient site that for many years was to blame for many heated arguments between different individuals, all convinced of its past purpose. Now largely accepted to be a celestial calendar and a meeting place for many ancient people who came together at solstices to hold elaborate and purportedly promiscuous festivals. However, the true age of Stonehenge, or indeed how the stones were once balanced atop of one another, or the precise knowledge of celestial activities displayed, is still unknown. Although to those who study the many other seemingly impossible ancient feats found all over Earth, Stonehenge is clearly a relic of a far more ancient civilization than any which artifactual evidence have been found for. In 1808, William Cunnington, one of Britain's earliest professional archaeologists, discovered what has become known as the crown jewels of Stonehenge. They were found within a large Bronze Age burial mound, today known as Bush Barrow. Within the barrow, Cunnington found ornate jewelry, including an intricately decorated dagger. Quote, the very finest gold work involved in the making and positioning of literally tens of thousands of tiny, individually made components, each around a millimeter long and around a fifth of a millimeter wide, said David Dawson director of the Wiltshire Museum in Devizes, where the micro-gold working achievements are on permanent display. The amazing process involved in creating the handle of just one dagger included up to 140,000 tiny gold studs, each just a third of a millimeter wide. The first stage involved manufacturing extremely fine gold wire, just a little thicker than a human hair. The end of the wire flattened to create a stud head then cut with a very sharp razor no more than a millimeter below the head. This delicate procedure was then repeated literally tens of thousands of times. An incredible ancient artifact found near one of the most enigmatic ancient sites in the world, yet amazingly, academia continues to deny the existence of out-of-place artifacts, instead opting to explain the construction of such marvelous work by claiming it was somehow the work of children, due to their more acute sight, this regardless of the clearly controversial evidence at hand. Who created such astonishing microscopic jewelry? Were these amazing artifacts once the possession of the actual builders of Stonehenge? Incredible items that are clearly amazing ancient oparts. The Ulfberts a group of medieval swords found within Europe dating between the 9th and 11th centuries. The blade faces are inlaid with the inscription Ulfbert with a cross on either side. The word turns out to have been a Frankish personal name. It somehow has become the basis logo, a trademark of sorts, used by multiple bladesmiths for several centuries in their impressive attempts to make the hardest, most impressive swords of the era. About 100 to 170 Ulfbert swords are known to exist, yet the origins of the name remain somewhat of an enigma. However, we dare to postulate that the name may have originated with, with this sword in particular, a sword which these bladesmiths may have been attempting to replicate and indeed figure out how it was made. A Nova National Geographic documentary titled Secrets of the Viking Sword, which first aired in 2012, actually took a look at this enigmatic sword's metallurgical composition. The Ulfbert sword has almost no slag content within its composition, and it has a carbon content three times that of other metals of the time. Carbon found to be a great addition in strengthening steel, creating a metal known as crucible steel, a critical discovery 
something which made England famous some 800 years after this sword's creation. In the process of forging iron, the ore must be heated to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. This will bring the metal to a liquid molten state, allowing blacksmiths to reduce impurities called slag. However, medieval technology did not allow iron to be heated to such a high temperature. Thus, the slag was removed by pounding it out, a far less effective method. Modern blacksmith Richard Furrer of Wisconsin spoke to Nova about the difficulties of making such a sword. Furrer is described in the documentary as one of the few people on the planet who has the skills needed to try to reproduce the Ulfbert by hand. To do it right, it is the most complicated thing I know how to make, he said. He commented on how the Ulfbert maker would have been regarded as possessing magical powers. To be able to make a weapon from dirt is a pretty powerful thing, he said. But to make a weapon at this time within history that could bend such without breaking, stay so sharp, and weigh so little would be regarded as supernatural. Furrer spent days of continuous, painstaking work forging a similar sword. He used medieval technology, although it required highly unconventional ways never before suspected or documented. The tiniest flaw or mistake, turning the sword into a piece of scrap metal. He declared his success at the end as more relief than joy. Who was the maker of this sword? How did they know how to make it? The mystery surrounding this out-of-place artifact persists to this day. We have long conjectured that many ancient ruins found throughout the world are not what they seem, attributed to groups within known and permitted history. We feel, however, that the evidence to suggest that they were, in fact, relics of an as-yet unearthed advanced civilization is now overwhelming. Many sites we cover escape modern understanding or explanation. Gigantic multi-ton megaliths, often somehow mysteriously quarried and transported from quarry sites sometimes hundreds of miles away from where we find them today. Such realities are undeniable, and the lack of any explanation as to how our more primitive ancient ancestors accomplished such tasks, we feel, remains elusive due to said site's origins actually being a far more capable, far more progressive, now lost civilization who were clearly once capable of such incredible feats. However, although many sites are often attributed to what we perceive were mere re-inhabitants and the archaeological footprint that they left behind, excavated and permitted to be studied in depth, pinned as the creators of said sites. However, the relic we are focusing on in the following video, an ancient artifact left by those who possibly created the site itself. Majorca, a favorite with holidaymakers, yet alas, what many do not pursue while on the island is the inexplicable stone megaliths which litter its tropical shores. Academically attested as a 3200-year-old relic, we feel, however, that the sword, although clearly of a remarkable preservation, is in fact far older than this, and those who have investigated the site and said relic have concluded that the only possible origin of this incredible object was that of a now lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization. Now known as the Taliot Sword, it is an astonishing ancient weapon, once somehow made far within antiquity, created to incredibly high standards, and we feel the reason the sword has survived so long is merely testament to the quality of the sword and indeed the past abilities of its creator. Recently discovered by a team of experts digging at the archaeological site known as Talio de Seralda Se Abelis, found within Puig Poyent, a municipality on Mallorca. The site is comprised of several stone megaliths, which are claimed to date back anywhere from 1000 to 6000 BC. We, however, hypothesize that the sword is far older than even these unusually generous academically dated estimates. The sword was found near one of the stone megaliths, known locally as a taliot, hence the sword's name. Built by the mysterious Taliotic culture, 
which we feel is the name given to lost civilization, that many funded individuals continue to try and dismiss, claiming that it was located within permitted timelines. Labeled by some as the Spanish Excalibur, it is undoubtedly an incredible artifact and one which sheds precious light upon the capabilities of a now lost civilization. Work is now underway at the site and is pegged to continue for the next few decades. Initially explored by historian and archaeologist Guillem Bordoy in the 1950s, it was in mid-September, as the researchers were readying the museum at the site, that the team found the sword. Who made the Taliyat sword? How old are the megalithic sites upon the island of Majorca? Are we looking at an artifact left by a now lost civilization? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. There has been a wealth of documented artifacts found within very ancient sediment, coal seams, minerals, and even stones and geodes all indicating that a vastly different story has taken place upon our Earth, to that of what the majority stubbornly persist in assuming. So many pieces of evidence, in fact, it seems that it has been an impossible task for an unknown group of tyrants who, for whatever reason, have attempted to conceal or suppress such discoveries, or more importantly, hide the historical tales in which they are all trying to tell us. And these next three are no exception. The Lanzhou Stone, discovered in 1999 by Zhilin Wang in a remote mountainous area in northwest China. Upon research being undertaken, it was established to be unexplainable. The rock is made of an unknown material, and the metal artifact embedded within may quite possibly have alien origins. As reported in the Lanzhou Morning News, on June 26, 2002. More than 10 geologists, physicists, and other specialists from such institutes as the National Land Resources Bureau of China, the Institute of Geology and Minerals Research, and the School of Resources and Environment all eventually studied the possible origins of the stone. The results of these examinations, the possible explanations for its formation or indeed origin, were never released. Amazingly, however, the scientists unanimously concluded that the stone is currently one of the most valuable in China or possibly the world. When pressed for further explanation, it was disclosed that the rock will apparently be extremely important for future research and, quote, archaeological studies. Any further disclosure regarding the scientists' discoveries has remained elusive. The Wolfseg iron has a similarly suppressed story, over 20 million years old, this extremely ancient and clearly once worked cube of iron may also have come from space. Indeed, that is a conclusion many educated researchers arrived at. Although attempts to discredit such claims involve recent testing, which has shown the cube lacks usual elements present in meteoric material, they all avoid mentioning its strong magnetic characteristics, a signature uncannily similar to that found in meteorites and other objects with an otherworldly origin. It was discovered when a workman at the Braun Iron Foundry in Schoendorf, Austria, was breaking up a block of lignite that had been mined at Wolfsegg. In 1886, mining engineer Adolf Gerlt reported the object to the Natural History Society of Bonn, who noted that the object was coated with a thin layer of rust, was made of iron, and had a specific gravity of 7.75. Early descriptions of the object appeared in contemporary editions of the scientific journals Nature and L'Astronomie, identified at the time by numerous scientists as being a fossil meteorite. Now virtually unanimously concluded to have been man-made, it has thus been unexplainable. Stolen at one point, it was strangely returned to another museum, now without a compelling mainstream explanation it has simply been condemned to the history books as some form of elaborate hoax. Impossible artifacts have been found in the most unusual of places. For example, a seemingly unbreakable piece of unknown metal, possibly a ring of ancient, or according to man's official history, alien origin found within a geode encapsulated for over 200 million years. Most people begin with good intentions, but sadly, 
are often allured away by various means of temptation, subsequently allowing such relics to disappear into the archives of the past. This report and the accompanying image, it seems, is all that we will ever see regarding this compelling artifact. A mysterious fate experienced by many such artifacts. For example, sadly, only the wolf's egg iron now remains in the public domain for future testing. What secret within our past is felt by some clearly powerful people as an imperative to keep concealed from the majority of the world? Maybe the question should be, will we ever be ready or indeed able to find out? Ancient Uparts are undoubtedly one of the most interesting subjects in regard to lost antiquities. Many of these artifacts, due to the locations in which they are found within, or the immense age displayed within the erosion seen upon the object, makes them one of the most controversial areas of study. How can one answer the question of how an iron pot is found within a solid lump of coal within a seam over 300 million years in age? Or how the clear imprint of a chariot wheel is found fossilized deep within a mine in Russia? These artifacts, found at hundreds of feet deep in sediment, or displaying a wooden handle petrified into coal, display an undeniably immense age, and as such, are solid pieces of evidence to support our posit of there having been a series of now lost civilizations stretching far into the past. Nature is infamous in being cyclical. Why then would we not be permitted by mainstream academia to presume this be the case for the climates of the Earth as well. Regardless of this digression, however, the subject of tonight's video is an incredible artifact which we believe to be that of an ancient upart. However, due to its incredible characteristic, is being masqueraded as that of a much later creation by a far more recent ancestor. Known as the Sword of Gujan, this intriguing artifact has somehow resisted the effects of time and although it is enormously old, is seemingly as sharp and as shiny today as the day it was made. This remarkable characteristic, although unexplained, is not the only interesting thing about the sword. It also features an incredibly old form of writing. Eight characters are written in an ancient script, now known as bird-worm seal script, literally birds and worms characters, owing to the intricate decorations of the defining strokes. It is very old and is attested to be a variant of seal script. In 1965, while an archaeological survey was being performed along the second main aqueduct of the Zhang River Reservoir in Jingzhou, Ube, a series of ancient tombs were discovered. A dig started in the middle of October 1965, ending in January 1966, eventually revealing more than 50 ancient tombs. More than 2,000 artifacts were recovered from the sites, including the sword, having been found inside a casket together with a human skeleton. The casket was discovered in the December of 1965 at the Wangshan site No. 1, 7 kilometers from the ruins of Ying, currently called Jinishang, once the ancient capital of Chu. The sword was found sheathed in a wooden scabbard, finished in black lacquer. The scabbard had an almost airtight fit with the sword body. Unsheathing the sword revealed an untarnished blade, despite the tomb being soaked in underground water for over 2,000 years. How did this sword retain its incredible condition? Why does it seem as if it is resistant to aging? What sort of metallurgy did the swordsmith once use to create such an amazing object? It is clearly an ancient upart and one we postulate has an origin now hidden within the bowels of history. It is a remarkable thing, and as such, is highly compelling. <laughs>